Good morning. Good to be with you today as we continue in Acts. Today we're going to be in the 12th chapter, and this is a chapter that focuses on prayer. And I would entitle this uh, the Book of Prayer and the Warming of Herod. And I'll get to the warming a little bit later, but Let's jump right into the first uh, verse of the 12th chapter of Acts. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some of, the, of those that belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. Now, this is uh, not Herod the Great. This is the grandson uh, of Herod the Great. This is Herod Agrippa the First. And Herod the Great had died in about 6 BC. This Herod, the son of Aristobus, uh, ruled in uh, the 43-44 time frame. And they were uh, being persecuted. The, the church was being persecuted and uh, this Herod was a Jew, but he worked for the Romans. So he was not very well liked at all. And he, uh, as scripture noted, had arrested some. And in verse 2, he had James, the brother of John, uh, put to death with the sword. This is, this is James and John, sons of Zebedee, and put to the sword means, uh, I guess that's the polite way of saying that he was beheaded. When he saw that this pleased the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter as well. It's interesting that the Jewish people were being pursued by the Jewish leaders. Uh, it was a very difficult time for them living amongst people that worked for the enemy, the captors, and, and were being persecuted by their own people. This happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and this was Passover time, and one followed the other, and very often the terms were used interchangeably for these two uh, major events in the Jewish calendar. And after arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. The 16 people guarding Peter. Uh, he was in lockdown. There was no way that he was going to escape. There was no way that the church would be able to get him out. Uh, he had a soldier on each side, and he had soldiers at the entrance to the, to the prison. But he was on lockdown. He, there was no way he was going to get out to escape. Herod intended to bring him out for a public trial after the Passover. Uh, it would be expedient for him to execute Peter because uh, Peter was known to be a leader. And plus the fact he was known to fraternize with Gentiles. So he would be a good person to expedite and to, to uh, put in prison and later execute after a trial that would no doubt be a false trial. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. This was the church in Jerusalem. Uh, Peter was, was bound, but prayers were loosed. In verse 6, 
It says the night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, one on each side, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. So it doesn't appear that Peter was too uptight about his coming trial. Uh, he was asleep between these two guards. And, and suddenly, verse 7 says, An angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick! Get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrist. God can free us from any physical or spiritual need. Peter was not concerned. He knew, no doubt, that the church back in Jerusalem was praying for his release, praying for for Peter's trial. Then the angel said to him, Put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. The angel told him, Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea what the angel was, was doing and what was really happening. I know you've had those moments I have where you're in a dream that is so vivid that you believe it's real and and this was the the this was the type of thinking that Peter had. He thought that he was was having a dream. James had been martyred. Uh, uh, Peter was being rescued, so God uses different people for different things. In verse 8, Then the angel said to him, Put on your clothes and sandals. Peter did so. Wrap the cloak around you. Uh, the, they had passed uh, through the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. Now, this is a very big, very heavy iron gate, and it passed open. They went through it. When they had walked the length of the street, suddenly the angel lifted him. This was kind of, a, of an un, aha movement for Peter, he, he, the angel left. He didn't know where he went, just as he didn't know where he had come from. He had thought this was a dream. Then Peter came to himself, just bam, and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and for everything the Jewish people were anticipating. He became aware at that time of God's presence. And we know from earlier studies in, in Acts that, that when God sends us, God also prepares us and prepares for us on the other side of the event. So in verse 12, when this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. This, I guess, was the war room. This could have been uh, the upper room where uh, the Last Supper took place. Uh, this was... Mary, the, uh, the mother of John Mark. John Mark was one of the three uh, people that went on the first missionary journey. Uh, it was Paul, Barnabas, and John Mark. 
Uh, this could also be the person, the young man that, that fled when Jesus was being arrested. Uh, this uh, John Mark is the author of the uh, fourth gospel or the gospel of Mark and uh, he is the one that is very important and very pivotal in this section of scripture. And this is interesting and Luke writes sometimes with humor and, and this is one of those times. Peter knocked on the outer entrance and a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. Maybe they didn't expect the answer so soon. Uh, you're out of your mind, they told her. You're out of your mind. It was it must have been his angel. And, and I would call this a, a gathering of unbelieving believers. They were in the home of Mary. They were praying for Peter. But did they not expect God to answer? They they believed certainly enough to be obedient to Jesus. They believed certainly enough to pray, but it seems they didn't believe that he would answer. Unbelieving believers. But Peter kept on knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. And of course, Peter kept on knocking. I mean, he was being sought uh, by the Jewish officials. He wanted to get in uh, and avoid exposure uh, to these people that were looking for him. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. He was telling the story about the chains falling off, and, and Rhoda was saying, probably under her breath, well, I told you so. It was Peter. And then he says, tell James and the brothers about this. He said, and then... He left for another place. And a couple of things about that. This is James, the half-brother of Jesus. The other James, the brother of John, had been beheaded. And, and we don't know where Peter went. He went to another place. He was, he was carried away, uh, perhaps by the angel. And here is uh, another bit of Luke humor, if you will. Uh, verse 18 says, In the morning there was no small commotion among the soldiers as to what had become of Peter. I think that might be the understatement of the chapter. I guess there was no small amount of commotion if you've got a man chained to two guards and two more at the entry and he disappears, I guess that would cause commotion. After Herod had a thorough search made for him and did not find him, he cross-examined the guards and had them executed. A pretty severe punishment for losing a prisoner. But the custom at that time was that if you were a guard and you lost a prisoner, then you would 
be subjected to the same punishment that the prisoner was to expect. So clearly, Peter was to be executed, perhaps beheaded like James was. So then, in the balance of that verse, then Herod went from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there for a while. He had been quarreling with the people of Tyre and Sidon, they now joined together and sought an audience with him, and having support, the support of Blastus, a personal servant of the king, and he was also the treasurer, and we don't know anything more about him than what is said there, uh, they asked for peace because they depended on the king's country for their food supply. So they were now trying to get in good fair with, with these people so that their food supply would not be cut off. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robes, sat on the tr throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, this is the voice of God, not a man. And here is where Herod crossed the line. Here is where he uh, created a sin. He sinned to the point where his death was imminent. He didn't do anything to contradict the people and give the credit to God. Rather, he took it on himself. This is a voice of God, not a man. And Herod, being so full of himself, said, though not recorded, yeah, you're right. Immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. Eaten by worms. What a miserable death. And this has happened to other members of his family who, who crossed the line with God. We don't want to defy God. We don't want to be disobedient to God. The Lord struck him down and he was eaten by worms and died. But, in verse 24, but the word of God continued to increase and spread despite the persecution, despite the beheadings, despite the imprisonment of leaders of the church, God continued to increase and spread. His word fulfilled in the growth and the spreading of the church. And then in verse 23, when Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission, they returned from Jerusalem, taking with them John, also called Mark. So this was the three of them, uh, Saul, Barnabas, and John Mark, that went on this first uh, missionary uh, journey, obedient to God's call. And what a story of the power of prayer what a story on the power of God to, to overcome the devious plans of man to rescue the faithful. Praise God. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for blessings. We thank you for this 
chapter on prayer and for the lessons learned about God's provision for the faithful, for God's rescue of the faithful, for God's use of the faithful in fulfilling his plan for man. We thank you for Jesus who came to rescue us from our fallen nature. Father, we pray for those that are anticipating surgery. We pray for those who are are traveling, who are in the hospital. Father, we just ask that you be, would be with them. Father, we pray for the leaders of our church. Pray that you would surround them with your love and care and guidance. All of things, these things we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. God bless you.